Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. If it is God you seek deliverance from, there is a condition that all men are mandated to assume. There is a posture that you must attain unto in the spirit in order to access deliverance from God. And that posture is humility and submission. Please write it down. Deliverance in the kingdom and in the spirit is only for men and women who understand the power of humility and understand the power of submission. You must come to a point where you acknowledge the reality of your human limitation outside of the help and the mercies of God. It is called brokenness in one word. First Peter chapter 5, please, from verse 6 and 7. First Peter 5, 6 and 7. Please write it and look up. The Bible says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Uh -huh. Casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Are we together? Do you have that down? James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God submit yourself to God then he says resist the devil don't come and resist the devil when you are not submitted to God he says resist the devil and he will flee your submission first your humility first you want to access deliverance you must come to a point where you admit and acknowledge that outside of the help of the mighty God I do not even know the tendencies that are enshrined in my own heart and you must be able to uh, to admit it unashamedly that except God helps me Vain is the help of man, including my own self. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. Many people want to experience that deliverance from God, but they are yet to come to a recognition that they are insufficient in themselves. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says not that we are sufficient of ourselves. He says our sufficiency is of God. What is sufficiency? The ability to always rise to the occasion. The ability to be without disappointment. You always are able to rise to the occasion. He's saying when you see that we are always full of capacity, it is not as though we attained it by our own power. We have outsourced a technology through our brokenness where we draw strength from God. Humility and submission. Listen to me. You want to experience the reality of that scripture to be delivered from evil? I can tell you that humility and submission to the governing authority of the Christ is a fundamental requirement if you will experience perpetual deliverance. Are we together? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, not a man, the righteous run it to it. You first have to admit that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that until you run to it, you are not saved. We live in a world where it's marketable to be proud, it's marketable to sound self-sufficient, as though outside of the assistance of the Christ, we are able to make it on our own and by ourselves. Even Jesus Christ said, I can of my own do nothing. Is that in your Bible? I can. He declared his vulnerability without fear and without shame. Now, please write this down. Deliverance from God is based on a response system we're going to pray now deliverance obtaining deliverance from god is based on a response system that means deliverance does not just come except it is a response number one deliverance comes as a response to a cry for mercy please write it down 
deliverance comes to the saints from God as a response to a cry for mercy. I said deliverance from God is based on a response system. Every time you see deliverance in the earth, it came as a response. Something, there was a reaction from the earth and then God responded to it. A response to a cry for mercy. Lamentations 3.22 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Because his compassions fail not. A response to a cry for mercy. There is something that always happens to the believer who knows how to cry to God for mercy. In Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. Luke chapter 18, please, from verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass, the story of blind Bartimeo, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. 36 now. And hearing the multitudes pass by, he asked what it meant. Next verse. The Bible says, And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, uh -huh, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is very powerful. Next verse. And the Bible says, And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. God will always respond to the cry of mercy. Next verse. Reading to 43. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come, he asked him, uh -huh, saying, What will thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Two more verses. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Verse 3, Immediately he received his sight. Did you know that Jesus would have just passed and left that person like that? And his condition would have looked like it was the will of God for him to be left there. But he understood that in the economy of God, there is daily bread for everyone. And that you can place a demand even through the cry of mercy. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Paul was teaching us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. He says that we may obtain mercy. You don't obtain mercy where you are. You must take the step to come boldly to the throne of grace by faith. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Deliverance from God comes to the believer as a response to a cry for mercy. Hmm. Cry for mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my health. Have mercy upon my job. We have taught for a long time in the body of Christ that mercy is for sinners. So most people do not understand the potential of mercy because they don't want to make it look like they are sinners. What are you saying mercy for? Have you done something wrong? Mercy is a mystery in the kingdom. He said above the mercy seat, below that below the mess, above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you. God meets men at the point of mercy. Most of us do not understand the power of God's mercy. If you can, please do listen to my teachings on mercy. I have taught extensively about mercy. The Bible tells us of the prodigal son that this gentleman began to deteriorate and deplete until. He who was once royalty with his father had now been reduced to feed with swine. Here's what he said. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto you, Father, I have sinned against you. You see brokenness there? And against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. Then the Bible says he got up and then he started going. Notice he never met the father at home. Because once you take the step, God will always meet you at the point of your obedience. It was as though the father was waiting for him to take that step. And then he met him. There are many people today who have experienced mighty deliverance from God. 
10 people can be in the same situation financially, ministerially, and a few of them will come out as if the devil does not exist because somewhere in that equation, someone knew how to cry for mercy. Lord, if you, I know that I do not understand financial principles to fund this ministry with integrity, but I cry that you are the God of heaven and because your mercies are new every morning, show me mercy. And that person who may not even know the dynamics of financial prosperity, someone can just call him and say, God said I should give you a billion. And you match the person with the results and they don't add up because mercy has spoken. May someone be a beneficiary of the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Mercy. A response to the cry for mercy. When I go to God in prayer, praying for myself and this ministry, I've told you, I don't go to God like a man of God coming to meet a colleague in ministry. I go to him expressing, not out of a standpoint of condemnation, but the depth of my ignorance. Lord, I do not know so many things. You have granted me the grace to come this far. I pray that your mercy will be and remain at the corridors of my destiny. Because outside of your mercy, this world is vicious. Outside of the mercy of God, it takes mercy before favor arrives. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. So the time for favor, the first thing you look for is mercy first before the favor. Are we together? Yes. The mercy of God. There are many easy things that have become hard because we are still standing by our own strength. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. With all your heart, it says, and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 is a warning to men. Be not wise in your own eyes, it says, but fear the Lord and depart from evil father it is by your mercy i'll be able to raise this child not i know i will raise my child god forbid that my child becomes an armed robber you know how many sincere serious missionaries who invested in raising other people when it got to their own children everything you know to mentor a child properly they did and the child still became an armed robber how do you explain judas being mentored by jesus how do you explain satan as jesus's creation becoming satan are we together now you would think an excellent God should be so flawless in his creation and his all-knowing ability should have pre-informed him that somewhere along the economy of his creation there could be a possibility he would have programmed that in creating them. Yet a third of the angels fell and he still remains God. Yet Satan, his creation has become the act enemy of his program and his purposes today. Judas, the one who was responsible for the bag, lost three things I've taught you. He lost the money, he lost his place, his bishopric, and he lost his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that it is by the mercy of God that we thrive and excel. You are in ministry here, you are in business. I want you to know that you must perpetually walk in the consciousness that all we are and all that we have is by and large a product of God's mercy. Hallelujah. I told you about a gentleman years ago. This guy fasted. That's the longest I've seen that I know. He fasted for 400 days, six to six. 400 days. I wrapped up the last day with him. And after that guy wrapped it up, he started suffering. And now you are wondering, I'm looking at my life and say, ah, if it is by the investment of spiritual things, some of us should not be where we are. But Lord, for your mercy. You see, the awareness of God, the administration of God's mercy is what brings thanksgiving, genuine thanksgiving. Where would I be? 
If you left me now, where would I be? If you left me now, where would I be? If you left me now, where would I be? There are many of us, based on the kind of training you gave your children, your children should almost be, respectfully speaking, they should not attain unto the level they now have. But the mercy of God caused that when your children left you, God brought prophets and apostles to cover them. They served as midwives so that the adults you now have are not the children. The trajectory of your training should not produce those kind of champions. But the mercy of God, the mercy of God. Some of you, you saw idols eat up your family members and it's not like you were more spiritual. One of the ones that died was even a pastor while you were an unbeliever. But God meandered you to a crusade and here you are today standing. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? Mephibosheth, when you get to the palace, do not forget that you were that crippled young man at Lodebar. It took the mercy of God for David to bring you. So do not laugh at Ziba. Ziba had 15 sons and not one of them was favored. They were made to walk and serve Mephibosheth. He was a product of a wrong midwife. A midwife made a mistake at his birth and crippled him he would have remained like that but God showed him mercy Mephibosheth when they bring you to the palace I know you can act pious but when you stay a few weeks in the palace do not allow the memory of where you came from to be so eroded that you lose touch that was the mistake of Vashti she forgot that the only reason why she was queen was that she married a king not because she was a warrior over 127 provinces she only married a great man that's what made her a great woman and she now created a camp and an empire for herself outside of the influence of the king and she lost her place Esther was about to make the same mistake when Mordecai said don't make that mistake her man is about to annihilate the Jews and don't you sit there and act don't act. you were a village girl in Shushan don't forget the purpose for your attaining that glory hear me let me tell you ladies and gentlemen when doors open be ever conscious of the mercy of god do not allow the beauty of the palace to make you look down on others and forget that it was mercy that took you there man of god do not celebrate your ministry and go around sarcastic and being sarcastic and insult people shame on this one small church Oh, you have forgotten that it takes many years for a building to rise but in minutes that building can crumble Listen carefully. You have now become a multi-millionaire. You have now become a billionaire. And you look at everybody and they are like pieces of rag. I'm reminding you that if you want to experience deliverance, you must know how to call for mercy and live in the atmosphere of mercy. My life today is a product of God's mercy. Look at me. This is all of me. There are some things that cannot be done by men except God assist a man. Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3 by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results men cannot produce, ladies and gentlemen. And in the presence of this plenty, the tendency is that we want to savour the glory and make it look as, it, as though it came as a product of our intelligence. For as long as I am breathing, I will let the world know. It is true that he has helped us to pay our price in various places. But I tell you, it will be foolish of me to stand here and beat my chest to tell you everything you see is a reflection of intelligence. No. I'm the one... 
You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one saying. I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Sing, I'm the one. I'm the one saying. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen. Years ago, I went somewhere. And I went to preach for a man of God. And when I was done preaching, I was headed to his office and I saw a gentleman who was working as part of the protocol. He looked at me and I looked at him and I was in shock. Many years ago on campus, that guy used to be a very strong person, very vibrant and powerful. If you saw that gentleman, you would think he would explode in a global ministry within two years. And here was this, my dear brother, didn't seem like the best of states, seemed like someone who had been beaten by life and frustrated. I was almost tempted to say what happened. Then I remembered. Man, these guys were vibrant. When I say, you know what it means? Campus vibrancy is, is, is with the infancy of spiritual work. So you put your energy to it. You look beyond me, oh. And poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. Sing, I'm the one, say. I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. Hear me. Thank God for these great people that God has blessed me with. But I remember the crowd that was in Jesus' ministry. They were the same people who said crucify him. So the larger they are, the more the voices that can say crucify you. You will need to cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. And say, Lord, not by our righteousness, but it is by your grace. The, the, the deliverance power of God comes in response to a cry for mercy. Apostle, right now I do not even know. I'm a man of God, but my family members have not eaten. Things have gone haywire in my life. What you need is a cry for mercy. You can cry the mercy of God to come and become a bailout system in your life. I can tell you this. Number two, let's hurry up because I want us to pray. Deliverance from God comes as a response to heartfelt prayer. Number one is a cry for mercy. Number two, heartfelt prayer. Deliverance from God comes in response to heartfelt prayer. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is speaking to Peter and the disciples. 26, 41. He says, watch and pray. We have a teaching on this later on because these two words capture a very deep mystery for surviving the evil of the times. He said, watch and pray. Watch is the product of intelligence and discernment. He says, when it has to do with your safety, there is a place for intelligence and discernment. Watch, be discerning, be vigilant. And then from the information you get from watching, you pray. You don't pray amiss when you watch. You watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. First Peter chapter 5, we read it earlier. Now let's do 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober and vigilant, he says, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. It says, whom resist steadfastly in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, this is not new. So there is a way of escape. You can resist him in the place of prayer. 
Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19, very powerful scripture. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Anything will turn to my salvation through your prayer. Anything at all. The challenges that now befall you as a result of open doors, they can be turned to your salvation like it happened at the prison. What was supposed to be a limitation to the apostles. Are we together now? Yes. Paul and Silas bound as a result of evangelism, as a result of promoting the purposes of God. The Bible says when they were tied there, eventually the jailer and all his family became saved. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but what looks like a, a dead end you are saying, Lord, the troubles that came to my life was because I got this job. I want to speak to you that in the place of prayer, there is a technology that converts pain to glory. If you know how to manage pain. I don't watch a lot of TV, but there are times I watch Food Network. And sometimes there are competitions that they have and they give them food that has stayed overnight. And they are expected to do something with that food and still produce a nice meal. Are we together? So they could give them maybe bread, food that has stayed. And it is, they now start thinking of various ways and they can turn it. You would think it was freshly prepared food. That's how it is. Something that looks like a dead end, programmed by Satan. Even the falling of the pit with prayer can become your advancement into Egypt. Even Potiphar's wife's trouble that led you to the prison can become the final bouncing point before you get to the palace. For I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Every time you are afflicted, according to James 5 and verse 13, it says, is anyone afflicted, let him pray. I can tell you when you pray with understanding, it sustains the ability to produce tremendous power. In fact, the Bible says in Mark now, Mark, um, what was the scripture? Verse 24, Mark eleven twenty-four. 24. It says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray. There is a relationship between desire, prayer, receiving, and having. Desire, Prayer, receiving, and having. I've told you that you can only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual technology. And then you have it as a manifestation. God is able to respond to men who travel in the place of prayer. You can access deliverance in the place of prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you that you can pray your way out of many troubles. You can pray your way out of many troubles. The moment you begin to discern that the spiritual climate is unfavorable, maybe your job, maybe your business, maybe ministry, all kinds of things are happening. Your, your husband is sick, your child is sick, finance going down. You see, the signature of Satan is discernible. The Bible says the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to kill, to steal and to destroy you can see his signature immediately the word of god is the principal tool for discernment you can see immediately this is satan this is satan and you begin to pray he gave us the prayer language as an advantage so that we do not walk with the limitations of the mind. The mind can catch up later on, but you can begin to engage in prayer, strategic prayer. It says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Luke 18 and verse 1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, he says to pray without ceasing, be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. The moment doors open, that is not the time for your prayer life to go down. That is not the time of laxity. 
do not get caught up with the delicacy of the palace that you forget to pray let me tell you how to command deliverance esther is in a dilemma right now because she needs to meet king ahasuerus and the ethics of kings those days were that if you if you stepped into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and he did not leave the golden censer you were dead immediately and he said mordecai i will go if i perish i perish but now is the time to engage all of us will be on prayer even with fasting we know what prayer can do i will go to meet the king and she stepped in to meet the king and the king said come he lifted the golden censer and that became the beginning of the process that will later become the destruction of mordecai of haman the lifting of mordecai and the salvation of god's people prayer is powerful can i tell you don't fold your arms and act like nothing is happening when darkness seems to loom around your life there are seasons in your life where you need dedicated time you should be prayerful all the time but let me tell you there are moments in life and destiny kairos moments i have taught you this when seasons are about to change there are many things that start happening to you one is an unusual desire to give number two is an unusual desire to pray these are indices that show you that you are finishing a season and you are entering a new one when Jesus was about to go to the cross from the communion table he went straight to Gethsemane and the Bible says he prayed repeating the same words drew strength from there and he says I'm ready Judas came with all the people and came and kissed him and he was able to build the stamina to survive until he gave up his life on the cross can I tell you if you turn aside in the day of battle the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small not because victory is not possible you need capacity in the spirit I pray that God will raise CEOs that pray I pray that God will raise preachers that pray pray for me pray for me is the plague of weak people yes there is a place for intercession but let me tell you everybody who is rising must master the mysteries of the altar you must know how to hold on to the horns of the altar until you command perpetual victory there are certain burdens of leadership that come upon you if you do not know how to flog out the destinies of people in the place of prayer you will raise a weak and a defeated people prayer is powerful you lock up yourself what is happening in this ministry it looks like doors of favor is closing it looks like all kinds of things we discern the signature of darkness father we call upon you you are the deliverer as a family you find out that you're rising you're excelling God is distinguishing you among your your other people within the bloodline perhaps and it looks like it's coming with corresponding consequences now you have intelligence to know that it is nothing unusual it is part of the battles that come with growth it is the implication of open doors there are giants on every mountain don't desire the mountain without holding the tools to fight the giant be like Caleb he said let us go up at once we are well able hallelujah you must know that deliverance comes in response to prayer i can tell you you can pray negative seasons out of your life you can pray unfavorable seasons out of your life there are times you take god seriously and take your destiny seriously and engage in the place of prayer until your light breaks are we together prayer does many things it supplies the fire that exposes evil there are times you are even confused you do not even know what is happening prayer in partnership with the word is what begins to filter the happenings beyond the realm of the sight to dig deep into the spirit and know what is really happening because you see judging by the flesh you are going to misjudge so many things prayer filters your perceptions until that which is true is what stands there was a viper hiding in the midst of the wood but for as long as there was no fire the viper was comfortable the moment the wood was lit the viper was exposed
people of God the greater you rise let any other thing you can outsource any other thing but not your prayer life outsource those who come to wash your cars outsource those who come to clean your house because you are busy outsource a secretary outsource any other person but in addition to the people who intercede for you you must independently understand that there is something about heaven's response to your voice to your voice to your voice to your voice there is no end time ministry that will stand without a proper consistent ever growing investment in the place of prayer there is no business that will stand i told you this you cannot be the same person leading the field expanding in your business and you believe that satan will fold his arms have you forgotten in the bible where a few people bound themselves with fasting and said they will not eat until paul died men can go that far for your downfall just because you are not wicked does not mean other people are not wicked. Not all men have faith, ladies and gentlemen. Someone can sit down and say, we see the children in this family rising. Let's see who else rises. The little work that I've done for the Lord in the ministry has shown me many possibilities that I probably would not have believed existed. As far as the administration of evil through the hearts of men is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you are people who understand the dynamics of the altar. My goal is to help you and support you with knowledge and to guide you. But you must pray. You must pray. You must pray. We live in times where you must understand the place of prayer. Don't say, I am weak. Start from where you are. Number three. Deliverance from God is based on a response to praise deliverance from God is based on number one a cry for mercy number two is based on heartfelt prayer number three deliverance from God to the saints is based on a response to praise Psalm 18 verse 1 to 3 Psalm 18 verse 1 to 3 I will love thee O Lord my strength verse 2 it says the Lord is my rock and my fortress he calls him my deliverer my God my strength in whom I will trust my buckler the horn of my salvation and my high tower let's read verse 3 together ready one to read I will call upon the Lord he says who is worthy to be praised by that formula hold on by that formula of calling upon the Lord and adding it with praise shall I be saved from my enemy he was revealing a formula that I will call upon the Lord who is deserving of praise so by prayer and praise shall I be saved from my enemy if you are Paul and Silas and you find yourself in the prison it is prayer Exodus chapter 15 verse 1 please give it to us let's hurry up they sang Moses and the children of Israel then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord watch the song that they sang this was after deliverance watch this now they had just been delivered from the Red Sea I will sing unto the Lord it says for he had triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Verse 2. It says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God. And I will exalt him. Verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. These are people singing. Singing the presence of God. Verse 4. We are reading to 11. It says, Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts had he cast into the sea his chosen captains also are drowned in the sea verse 5 the depths have covered them they sank into the bottom of a stone 6 thy right hand O God is become glorious in power I hope you know this is a song thy right hand O God had dashed in pieces the enemy 
and in the greatness of thy excellency hast thou overthrown them that rose up against thee thou settest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble eight and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right in a heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea nine the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my loss shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them verse 10 it says thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as leads in the mighty waters who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness read the remaining part fearful in praises as a result doing wonders god is fearful in praises and the moment he arises as that warrior the next thing you see are his wonders who is like unto thee O god among the gods it says glorious in holiness fearful in praises listen carefully ladies and gentlemen i can tell you by the power of the holy spirit and i can tell you from the integrity of scripture and experience praise is a deep mystery that is able to overturn possibilities and grant the insist that the believer stands at the point of victory these are the forces of the spirit that help and guide men now let's finish the scripture that we left up in acts chapter 16. we read down to 24. now let's start 25. at this point paul and silas are in prison then the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed is that in your bible and they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them watch the god of heaven now suddenly Shibaka so prandiki payata. Ah, this is someone's testimony. Suddenly, it says there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Read on 27. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled 28 but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm we are all here 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas here it is he brought them out and said silas what must I do to be saved? Anything can turn for your salvation when you know how to engage the mercy of God, you know how to engage prayer, and you know how to engage praise. 31. It says, They said unto him, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house reading to 34 and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes this was the jailer and was baptized and he and all his straight away the last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meet before them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house for we know that all things work together not for everybody to them that love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purposes so Jesus is teaching the disciples prophetically not just theologically he's teaching them because their lives and their faith adventures will be plagued with many many challenges that come with open doors and he said in your prayer the moment daily bread begins to come the moment doors and dimensions both in the spirit and in life start getting opened you must master the art of mercy you must master prayer you must master praise these mysteries you must use to surround yourself with like chariots perpetually you are one who walks in consciousness of god's mercy 
you are one who works in consciousness of the ministry of prayer that you can lock your office as a CEO and dedicate 30 minutes and you are praying and there is a board meeting that is coming with all kinds of people coming from across the globe you would think all that you would need is brain work some of the people coming for that meetings are coming with their charms and mediums like Rachel remember when Rachel was leaving the house of Laban she took the gods of her fathers with her just because you see people's wearing suit or dressing nice they all their gods they, they are fraternities with dark powers negotiating the destinies of men upon the table of greatness you cannot go there being casual hear me many of you God wants to lift you you are trusting God to become a kingdom financier have you heard about the king of Tyre the one who sits upon the mountain of commerce of the earth you cannot come and transact business except you sell your soul he did that to Jesus there is a level of wealth you cannot attain onto just by buying and selling believe me if you are in this kingdom the person speaking to you is not in ignorance by the grace of God I know a bit about finances I can tell you there are certain heights in the spirit it is not buying and selling that takes you there there is a covenant transaction between men and spirits do you believe that <laughs> please believe oh if you suddenly return a billionaire tomorrow people will not say what did you do they'll say where did you go to this kind of result is Hello, about what you have done again. We hope this Where you, you must have gone somewhere. And they are right. Something for us. If you are new here, a man I goes to bed and sleeps in the night us. and has a and dream. Like this video, in that dream, he well, receives an impartation of an understanding heart. And then he is also given access to wealth like no other person. And then he wakes up and his fame spreads abroad. Resources start coming. Remember, it will come through men, but it is still controlled from the realm of the spirit. When Job lost everything that he had, Job lost everything, but he did not lose his relationship with God and his ability to sustain, to capture the mysteries of the spirit. In Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Bible says the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. I'm interested in knowing how that twice came. The Bible is not silent about it. 11, it tells us what happened. That there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. It meant something drove them away from him. Now they came and did eat bread with him and in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Here's the secret. And every man gave him a piece of money and an earring of gold. All blessings come from God through men to men. That's how he got twice everything he lost. Abraham who was broke. How did God prosper him? He went to Egypt. And then Abimelech was going to take his wife and God warned him and said, if you touch that man's wife, you're already dead. And Abimelech said, sorry, I will not only leave your wife, I will give you gold and all kinds of things. And he left with it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your possibilities in this kingdom are based on the mysteries that you know and you can handle in the spirit. Dominion and stature is, is possible when you stand upon this mystery. These things are not cunningly devised fables. They are the mysteries that men transact with in the spirit and it produces the possibilities that we enjoy in the earth realm. Hallelujah. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. The doors of persecution will open as the doors of increase come to. The doors of witchcraft, manipulation and attacks will come. A day will come where you don't need to ask if anybody has taken your name to a shrine. What you will be asking is how many? Not has it gone there? There is a level in the spirit where while you are calling upon the name of the Lord, there are people who will be praying perpetually. There are realms where Satan does not want you to backslide. He wants you to die. Because even in your backsliding state, you are still dangerous. He wants you to die. Are we together now? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. 
what you have learned and you are learning are irrefutable secrets of the kingdom that guarantee your rising but if I did not teach you what you learned today many of you will be surprised that God will call you dear Mary thou favored one and the next thing here comes the scribes and the Pharisees asking you questions and saying this vision that came without the assistance of a man you need to explain it how did that pregnancy happen without the natural process of conception they will say how did you become a millionaire without cutting corners are you sure are you really sure the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10 and 11 to the intent he says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places all of the things when you read from 3 Ephesians 3 and verse 3 Paul began to speak how that by revelation it was made known unto him the mystery as he wrote in few words verse 4 reading to 5 he says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in ages past he says were not known to the sons of men but had now be revealed to his holy apostles and prophets even by the spirit go to verse 9 he now says that this grace was given to him to make all men and see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ to the intent now verse 8 that is why God grants access to revelations so that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God the manifold wisdom of God Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day access to the doors of destiny that needs to be opened. Give us this day access to superior levels of influence across the cosmos. Give us this day access to levels of the anointing superior end time mantles. But Lord, as you grant us access to this day, we pray that you lead us not into temptation and then please help them deliver he says deliver us from the evil that comes with growth deliver us from the evil that comes with speed deliver us Elijah you have been sent as a Tishbite to speak over Israel but beware your rising is also the rising of Jezebel she will look for you. The battle was over two people. I have the king in partnership with that she goddess encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel. Jezebel was not a woman. She was a spiritual system of rebellion. It's an extension of the antichrist system. That is why it's a spirit that only thrives when it is connected to government. That's why she stayed with Ahab. The same spirit manifested through Herodias when Herod came because John the Baptist now resurfaced in the spirit of Elijah. Listen to me. If you are Elijah, expect Jezebel. She's watching you. Don't you think you would just stand and prophesy? The prophets of Baal are the easy part of the deal. But that she goddess is vicious. Elijah ran away from her. A man that caught fire to consume others. Are we together? I told you. With the arrival of mantles, destinies, there are many, many, many attacks. Ah, I just said mantles and I just saw fire. This is what I saw in the spirit. As I said mantles, I just saw fire. Mantles, 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 mantles. Because there are doors that God is opening. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are dimensions that have not yet been made access, accessible to anyone in your family. Now you are coming from behind like Joseph. Not the first, but the chosen. Not the first, but the chosen. And those doors are about, you have mastered the art of saying Ephata. 
for the doors to open you have to understand how to now hold the sword because let me tell you the truth warriors do not just speak warriors fight warriors do not just speak they fight they are men and women who must know how to hold the sword of the spirit and fight with valiance you can't turn back your turning back will be the destruction of a generation it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and it says to run with perseverance there is no going back not for the warrior you master the art of using the sword and you fight with valiance say blow the trumpet in zion sound the alarm upon my holy mountain and he begins to describe a people so vicious he said before them is as a garden of eden behind them a desolate wilderness these are men that can fight i have fought a good fight he says hear me whether you are in ministry or you are in business provided doors are open don't just wear suit carry the armory of a warrior as you enter through those doors a time will come you will need to remove a ceo regalia and put on the garment of a warrior there are giants on every mountain be like caleb stand tall oh david do not let goliath scare you you can take him down not by the sling but by the covenant that you stand upon he said you come to me with your bows and your spheres but i come to you in the name of the lord god of the armies of israel in whom you have defiled listen we're about to pray but ladies and gentlemen please hear me the prayer deliver us from evil some of you the doors that are opening right now you came to church with questions about the happenings in your life what is suddenly happening to my health the moment they made me a ceo they said i have high blood pressure where is it coming from welcome as you encounter the giants that sit on those mountains it is not for you to start discussing warriors don't discuss they fight take up your arsenals the work God has given you will not just keep rising like that and then the devil folds his arms he will come as many things Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, there was a gentleman who was going to get an appointment. I think he was in, in an oil and gas company. This guy had labored and worked hard. Everybody in the family had struggled financially and in destiny. They were sincere people. And then this guy kept engaging this mistress. Finally, a job that was going to come and open a door to wipe the tears of people. Do you know what happened? This guy slept and suddenly started having all kinds of funny dreams. This was according to him. And then they would, they, he was supposed to bring a report of medicals. And there were specific hospitals they were to go to. From nowhere, this guy was diagnosed with something that was going to make him lose that job. I remember very clearly. He reached me and said, I've never been like this. I, this, this was my genotype. This is my blood group. This is this. Where did this one come from? And I told him, I said, my friend, let me tell you, if you are interested in that job, you need to know that Satan has determined a threat that in your rising is the rising of many. Instead of fighting everybody, he should fight you. Hear me. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There are men that are equal to nations. Instead of Satan fighting nations, he will focus on fighting them. If he can fight the mantle upon your life, that would be equivalent to fighting a million people across the globe. 
if he can fight your ministry, it is cheaper than fighting all who will rise from you. If he can fight your business, he is by extension fighting all those who look up to you for direction and inspiration. It's time to fight the fight of faith. I told that gentleman, I said, I will pray for you. The devil is a liar. Don't believe that nonsense. Here is an opportunity for your rising to help wipe the tears of your family. Hallelujah. There are many of you here who are victims of the realities of foundations and God wants to lift your family, not just you. Oh Joseph, the attack is not on you. The attack is on the deliverer who will save Egypt, Israel. It is not about you Joseph. One day you will become the second in command. You will have access to preserving the destiny of a nation. Moses, it is not about you. Satan is too serious to fight individuals. He fights dreams. He fights prophetic programs. He fights mantles. Harashada Katabata. Oh prophet, hear me. The battle you are going through has nothing to do with you. It is a mantle that you are carrying. An apostolic and a prophetic mantle. Satan was there when prophecy was spoken over you. Satan was there when declarations were made. He was not angels alone. He was there. He had the declarations. Listen. Did you ever ask why Satan kept moving through the scribes and the Pharisees to ask Jesus who he was? They met John the Baptist and said, are you that one? What was Satan looking for? He didn't say, why are you here? There, there was a person they were looking for. And John kept confusing them. Who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, saying, repent, make straight his ways. And then Jesus comes. You know why Satan killed John? Because he knew the Jesus and he did not say it. When Jesus was finally ordained and commissioned, he ensured that like Jezebel wanted the head of Elijah, the head of John the Baptist went for it. I shared with you my visions. Years ago, I was praying one night and then the roof, the ceiling of my room just disappeared. And I'm seeing this creature that is standing before me. A giant creature looking like a dinosaur. Having a tail that had its own life. That could be disconnected from the creature and still be alive. Bulgy eyes. One eye was looking like the head of a man. And he was looking with fierce anger. And spoke fluently. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. I have met demons, I have met spirits. It is not only angels I have met, I have met demons, I have met spirits. I can tell you one thing with the devil, he's determined. When he finds out that there is prophecy on your life, when he finds out that you're opening the door is the rising of many, get ready, the king of Tyre, he will wait for you. Elijah. There are bands of prophets waiting to come and frustrate you. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Thanks be to God. Hear me? The secret now is in Job 38 and verse 33. It says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou establish the dominion thereof? in the earth do you know the principles by which the mysteries by which the heaven regulates itself and can you reproduce that reality in the earth this is what jesus meant when he said your kingdom come and your will be done 
capture the principles, the modus operandi of the spirit and reproduce it within your life, within your sphere. And you truly will begin to walk like a God upon the earth. Psalm 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are God and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me, as far as it depends on me, I will not only force those doors to open, that everyone behind me, it says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. You are not the only one who came from a bad background. Find out where Jesus came from. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not say you are lying. Because the most popular Nazarene that they knew died in a very painful way. The man called Samson. That there was a spirit that followed great Nazarenes. Even though they were people who had a covenant with God. And would just destroy them at the prime of their life. Nathaniel said, don't waste your time following Jesus. There is something in his foundation. His success will not last. And Jesus sees such a man and says, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. In other words, from the sincerity of his heart, what he's saying is true. I know it is true that people who come from where you are from never rise beyond a certain threshold. It is true until your access to the mysteries of the kingdom rewrites that script. I know it is true that certain people never attain onto a level of wealth and abundance with a kingdom mindset. It looks like the only way you live is by begging all the days of your life. Anointed but you are a beggar. And so the spirit wants. But you can arise and rewrite certain things. Rewrite certain things. Rewrite certain things. Every decree can change. Let me tell you the truth. Every decree can change. Even when Haman died, the king had already stamped a decree that permitted the death of the Jews. So the, the enemy had gone, but the system was still going to cause their defeat. And Esther came and told the king, you are a king. You are the one who wrote the first one. You can write another decree again. We change decrees by writing another decree. Who wrote the decree that you will not rise? I am also a king and a priest unto my God. And I can take the advantage of that king-priest dimension in partnership with the spirit and write that from this moment henceforth, everybody rises. That from this moment henceforth, everybody rises. That from this moment henceforth, God is glorified in everybody connected to me. Where the word of a king is, the Bible says, there is power. Hear me? If the power from your royalty does not speak, it means that your scepter of honor and authority has not been given to you. Or the consecration that ordains you as a king is not there. Or you have refused to use your authority to declare. But hear me, O David, when the oil comes and the scepter comes, and the crown comes you are king 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 kings declare by speaking kings rewrite things he said my heart is indicting a good matter yeah i speak of excellent things that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer i can rewrite possibilities in my life and in the lives of others Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Shabala Sodavana. Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, feel this place.
Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. you are in the next one minute i'd like you to begin to pray seriously in the spirit go ahead and begin to generate energy in your spirit man in the name of Jesus, overcome us by the blood of the Lamb. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. The evil that comes when doors open, the evil that comes when mantles come, the evil that comes when increase comes. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Just two prayer points and we're done for tonight. I'd like you to begin to invoke the mercy of God across every aspect of your life that it seems the devil is taking advantage of. Oh, by the mercy of God, the Lord rebuke you. I call forth the mercy of God. Someone go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Invoke the mercy of God. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Ah. Rise. Yes, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I know. Open your 
king and priest in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord rebuke you I invoke the power of Elohim I rebuke you over my life over my health someone pray the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the covenant of the God of David fights you in the name of Jesus I call upon the holder of the key of David that opens a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open he has opened the door no man can shut it go ahead and declare he has opened the door no man can shut it speak over your ministry speak over your family Satan thus far have you come no further shall you go the Lord is against you in the name of Jesus the Lord is against you Please hear me. Please hear me. Listen. Listen. Many of you will run sometimes this year and come and listen to this message again because the prophecy for open doors is not complete until there is a training to know how to become a person of stature. You need the door to remain open for those behind you to come there are giants on every mountain that is why you are a warrior he said i have fought a good fight i have kept the race you are not only a runner when you are in the field dressed like an athlete but you are in the battleground don't wear athletic clothes you have to carry the regalia of a warrior you are both a warrior you are an athlete and you are a keeper hallelujah hear me for many of you under the sound of my voice here tonight and falling across the globe the Spirit of God is depending on your consistency for the liberty of many people any laxity in your pursuit will not only cost you alone the realm of the Spirit taught you to be your grandfather he started on a good note but eventually laxity and frustration there was zeal but no accurate knowledge of the precepts of the spirit so he could not survive the viciousness then it came to your father some of them did their best as far as they could go now the baton has come upon you you may be young you may be the last but by no means the least the mantle is still on you God is counting on you right now will you be the one to end this cycle and start a new one he said are you the one or should we look for another are you the one who has come now are you the prophet we have been waiting for or should we look for another are you the apostle that our grandfather prophesied that a day will come in this city a young man will arise with fire and power are you the one or should we expect another who is yet to come are you the businessman that prophecy has come upon that you will be the one through your resources 
to liberate nations hear me the Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God any day your faith selects is the day you make your rest it says let us therefore labor to enter that rest and the way we labor is found in Jeremiah 6 16 it says to stand in the way and then he says to see and ask for the old path wherein is a good way when you find it he said walk in it and for sure you will enter your Sabbath please hear me as we prepare to round up tonight the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to someone I am still depending on you I am still depending on you I am still depending on you Moses do not prolong prophecy by 30 more years because of the laxity in your training when the prophecy came to Abraham it was 400 years match the prophecy with the speed of your training so that you do not add 30 more years and make God look like a liar if you are slow you will delay prophecy and time will be added and men will suffer you must be up and doing at a cutting edge to match up with what has said he said I Daniel understood by books he opened the book to see where it was written that the captivity of Israel in Babylon would come and when he found the time he postured himself in fasting and prayer for 21 days until Gabriel was sent from heaven to come and bring him word and while he was coming the prince of Persia the spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenlies he stopped him and he maintained in persistence an archangel Michael he came and it prevailed not and he had now come he said I am come to give you understanding he gave him understanding and he knew the times that the captivity of God's people would come to an end in this season we must master the art of reading the writings on the wall you must have the eyes of the spirit that when you see things written on the wall you must discern what the spirit is saying the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith is it not in your Bible that the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly it says that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons but the most important thing is that the spirit speaketh expressly we must obtain grace that our eyes be washed with eye salve and that our ears be attuned to the frequency of the spirit to know what God is saying per time past season let us walk after the order of the sons of Issachar the Bible says they are men that had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do as a result their brethren were at their command there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end. there are names there are I stand by this prophetic and apostolic mantle and I declare over your life in the name of the resurrected Christ who gave gifts to men that every door that has stood closed over you in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I speak to that door Ephata be open Ephata be open Ephata be open in the name of Jesus it says and thou O Lord will teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight i decree and declare in the name of jesus the strategy for victory that you have now received obtain it and last through your open doors 
last through your open doors last through your open doors no decline no retrogression in the name of jesus christ